Ready, set, go. Oh, yeah. Pop, 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 pour and beers. Welcome to the show where some use tomatoes and others use um, thumbs. We use a very casual one to four rating system that's meta- metaphorical and then the popcorn is a baseline and we use beers to add to that. And that's how it goes around here. <laughs> uh, just messing with the formula here because we don't have fries so the kids can run around uh my name is josh welcome joined by jordan what's up dude what's going on how you doing oh, not a whole lot i'm doing good man good, it's a good, big good. weekend butter on top this week was uh barbenheimer mm-hmm. talk about that double feature yep double and feature I- I haven't seen either, so what I'm going to do is listen to your review and pick which one I'm going to see today, and I'll throw it in. Oh, no. A lot end. of pressure. It's on you, buddy. Uh, but besides <laughs> that, what have you been getting into this week with, uh, with the shows and such? So, yeah, with uh, having to get to the movies twice this week, it's a little hard to get those uh, you know, uh, um, casual watches in. Yeah. But I, I, I did watch something that had a little bit of overlap with Oppenheimer. Because I watched The Wonder on Netflix starring Florence Pugh, who is also in Oppenheimer. Ooh, love her. Uh, yeah, yeah. It it's, uh, starts out really strange. It's a like an 1800s period piece during the potato famine in Ireland. But it starts <laughs> – yeah, yeah. It's, it starts out on a set stage though, like behind the scenes with some narration and you're like, wait. Am I watching what I thought think I put on or what's going oh, on here? It's a little okay. confusing. Yeah. Uh, but it's about an 11-year-old girl who people believe or don't believe through the power of prayer and whatever has not eaten for 4 months and is in perfect health. And Damn. different people yeah, different people have their own interests in keeping this going for some reason. Uh, the whole movie's pretty uh, it's kind of a downer, it's a little dreary and it it, it takes a really really dark turn at the end. But it was an interesting watch. I, I give it a popcorn and one. Popcorn and one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's all I got to watch this week. What about you? Oh, is that right? Just the one? It was so good. You're like, yeah. no, I got I to gotta think about this movie for a little while. Was it one of those? <laughs> <laughs> like when yeah. you see um, Requiem for a Dream, like you're just done watching anything for the rest of the week. You just got to sit there and think about yeah. the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, so I watched a few because I haven't seen them, have had the chance to go to the theaters yet this week. So I was inside hanging with Dad. When I was hanging out with Dad, he uh, watches uh, some old action flicks. So I watched, this is kind of in line with our butter or our cl- drunk classic today because it's just cheap action. I watched Transporter 1 and 2. I'm just going to go ahead and give them both the same review, same kind of review because I think they're both good enough mm-hmm. to be the same and they're easily popcorn in one movies. Borderline 2. Maybe they're popcorn and twos because they're both very good. Uh, they they uh, kind of got a hold of that sort of movie genre before it got really corny, but it had enough camp mm-hmm. involved to where they didn't they didn't take themselves too seriously with the fights. Like he's always finding props and they today I'm going to fight with a marker. This is the marker fight scene. And he does all these creative techniques of with the fire hose is more accurate. That actually happened. (laughs) So it's fun. He has fun fight scenes. It doesn't take itself too seriously. There's little tiny bits of dry comedy with the interactions with the detective. It's pretty good. Honestly, I think Statham before he was a big, big, huge name. It was probably the movies that made mm-hmm. him a big, big, huge name. They're very good movies. Cool car stuff. Nothing ridiculous, ridiculous. Of course, there's a little bit of Hollywood in there, obviously, but not over the top yeah. like a Fast and the Furious. So I give him a popcorn and two. I'm going to go ahead and go for it. Boom. Uh, then I watched Hunt for the Wilder People. That's a popcorn and three movie. I forgot where I watched it. I oh. think it's Hulu. And it's my second time watching it. Just a fantastic film. And it's it's uh, it's done by Taika Waititi. Waititi? Waitoto? Uh, Julian Dennison. It's a kid you're thinking of. Uh, he's... Yeah. I don't, know if, I don't know if this was his debut. I know Deadpool wasn't, but he... Maybe it was. I don't remember. But 
he's got a lot of charisma, and I hope you see more of him. And I had Sam Neill. Mm-hmm. It's always a huge joy to see Sam Neill acting, working at all. He's great. He's great every time he does it. He's kind of like um, I heard some comedian on a podcast thing say it earlier uh, yesterday, like John Goodman. It, like no matter what, if it's good movies or bad movies, he always delivers. No matter what, yeah. he never had a bad role. So that's pretty cool. I think that's that's John Goodman and in this case Sam Neill. Wonderful movie, great story, very funny, heartwarming, sad but like endearing. Mm-hmm. It's just a big adventure. It's an adventure movie. Fun adventure movie, and I think it's for all ages. Huh, that's a popcorn and three. Then I watched cool. Nobody. I think Nobody's Ooh. been reviewed at least once on this show. So I'll just repeat. I, I'm pretty sure I said it was a popcorn and two movie. It's a popcorn and two movie. It's suburban John Wick. But yeah. this John Wick yeah. is really getting into it. Like J- John Wick is like, okay, well, I guess I have to kill a bunch of people. But Nobody, it's like the slow transformation. I guess it wasn't so slow. It was kind of a a, a, a switch flipped or mm-hmm. something close to that starts out. He's just this suburban guy. And then at the end of it, he realizes, no, I'm a bad mother effer, you know? Yeah, and yeah. it's great. Really, really good. Really great. Creative fight scenes, engaging plot, kind yeah. of a slow, slow drip in the beginning, but you kind of can tell that you can tell where it's going. And I don't think you, you should get bored by any means. <laughs> no, Even though no. it takes a while for the stuff to really get going, it builds the character up in a great way. Maybe more yeah. than John Wick might have. Odin Kirk plays that role really good. Odin Kirk, who's who's uh Saul from Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad. If you didn't yep. know that, yeah. And he's from the well, he wrote on Saturday Night Live, but he had Mr. Show. Mr. Show was his oh, yes, show. yes, 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 yeah. Let's Monty Python level legendary to that show. Just about anything <laughs> Odin Kirk does, he's a he's a great guy. He's in the Conan O'Brien level. Echelon for me. Like, then I watched um, See How They Run. I didn't know this movie was a thing. It was cool. Sam Rockwell in the leading role. That's not very often you see that. He's super character actor guy. And he was a character. He was like a lead role who was the character actor. And he kind of... Yeah. Maybe he wasn't the main character. Maybe it was... What's her name? Saris, Saris Ronan? Star, Star, Star Wars Ronan. Star Wars. Star Wars Rerum. <laughs> Uh, I guess she was really the protagonist in the end. It, it followed him and her almost equally, but she was yeah. the one with charisma. She was the one that really made the moves. Anyway, Rockwell, always great to see him. Actually, I think his English accent wasn't quite spot on, <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. good enough. Yeah. He played the alcoholic, just burnt out detective pretty well. It was entertaining. It was fresh. Uh, once again, another movie where it's poking fun at the genre and analyzing itself within itself, within itself again, like Mm -hmm. murders on murders. Like, Oh, this is based off of a real murder. Oh, there's a real murder happened in the play about the murder about which is about the real murder. And then (laughs) people like, Oh, is this the part where you interrogate us and see who's the killer? Like the whole movie was (laughs) done inverted within itself like three times. Yeah. And that's just the trend of the season of like the 2010 and on everyone just wants meta. It's just meta on meta stuff, dude. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of getting old. I don't know, but they do a good job with it. Really funny dialogue, really quick, sharp dialogue. And I appreciate that. However long the movie might drag, which I felt it might have Uh, star Wars. Reem Rom was a wonderful charismatic part and good, you know, good plot. I didn't really expect the ending, but the ending wasn't really that cool either. Maybe, I don't know. Whatever. It was fun. Popcorn and one movie. Lastly, I watched Interstellar 5555. This is not Interstellar with Matthew uh, McCornahan. This is actually Interstellar. It's an older film of early 2000s, maybe. I forgot, but have you heard of it? Have you seen it? No. Oh, please put it on your list. So it's the band is Daft Punk. You've heard of them. Yes. Yes. So one of their albums was made into a movie. And it's really there's no dialogue that you can hear. There's no subtitles. Uh, But it's it's the whole album front to back. And it's just a gigantic music video drawn in an anime style, like an old school anime style. 
with a incredible story. It starts off, you kind of understand, you have an idea of where it's going, but then it switches up and it switches up again. Not like a huge twist, but it's, it opens more up. Like it world builds really, mm. really well in just basically, what is it, an hour, 20 minutes at the most? It's just one album. But it's beautiful, incredible animation that tells a story without any words spoken. It's just the, the songs and the songs just kind of match what's happening. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not quite a Pink Floyd the Wall. It was made with intention, but it it's loose, loose. It's yeah. it's a fan, it's a popcorn and three. It's one of those movies. It's a stoner movie. I'll be honest, but <laughs> everyone would un- enjoy it. Every stoner you know has seen it, <laughs> most likely, or white stoner at least. Um, <laughs> popcorn and three movie. It's a really fantastic. I really suggest everyone put it on their list for Sunday. I think it's for free on YouTube right now, or it's on Hulu. Is he one of the two? Uh, right. That's about cool. it, dude. Besides the drunk classic. Cool. Yeah, the drunk classic was my pick this week, and I picked WWE production film, The Woo! Condemned, uh, starring Stone Cold Steve Austin, the Texas hey, Rattlesnake. That's the bottom line. <laughs> you stupid some. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> I so I own the DVD. I love this movie. Um, it's very nostalgic for me. Saw in theaters as a, gosh, I don't know when it came out, but you know, adolescent, where'd you guys stream it on? I uh, rented it on YouTube's. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. It's a cool movie. Last kind of a last man survivor. It's like the precursor to all these like battle Royale games that are out now. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah basically the plot is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, hardcore, a bunch of, like supposedly the most deadly convicts in the world on death row, various countries, whatever is are picked out of prison and put on this Island where they have to fight to the death. Uh, There's weird, like add-ins, like they drop Mm -hmm. uh, a machine gun from the sky or a bow and arrow from the sky or something like that. And yeah, basically the last man surviving gets set free Uh, and yeah, just mayhem ensues. Uh, and obviously, you know, there's some brutal scenes, you know, being yeah. that these are the, supposed to be the nastiest, you know, terrorist criminals in the world. So some really uh, messed up stuff happens, but there's some funny, funny, witty dialogue in there. Uh, good, some good acting from some new faces, you know, it's a B movie. So it's a lot of people you don't know. So some, there's some decent acting for what it is, honestly. If I get, did a really good job. You diet Piven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He actually Makes was a pretty good time. psychopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like so what do you think him, about the movie? I like the part with him where, like, it's all falling apart now, right? And he's trying to find a way to escape. And his buddy's coming up to him like, hey, what's going on? And then, like he's just walking away like, oh, hey, what's up, dude? That made me laugh yeah, yeah, out loud. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. total narcissist. Like, gaslighting begins now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, what's up, man? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought it was... I well, thought it was Oh, go ahead. Uh, I remember the the scene that I like when um, they're first dropping everybody around the island mm-hmm. from the, like they push them out of a helicopter, and uh, everyone's got the the betting pool going on. They're showing people in bars betting on it, watching it, whatever. And they push a guy out, and he like I don't know gets impaled by a tree branch yeah. or something. They're like, dude, you're not supposed to kill the guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the pool's like, damn it, does that count? That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah uh the movie reminded me of because i just watched guns akimbo and it's not the same thing exactly but it is a survive last man standing situation and it's being televised across the planet like definitely took stuff from that mm-hmm. uh, but as far as this movie goes i don't know if it's steve austin's first uh i hope it wasn't his last but he was pretty dang good. I, I noticed they didn't give him a whole lot of lines and he didn't have a whole lot of character building in the sense of like showing it, the, you know, like the scene where they show the tough guy, like show a little bit of humanity for a second. And then he's like, I've got to move on, you know, mm-hmm. uh, didn't really have that either. It was just like, I, I think it was preferable. Honestly, Steve Austin being a badass, he was like, all right, well, let's get it done. Sweetheart. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's yeah. what he did. It was a pretty good movie. He just got to work jump straight in the sand yeah. like oh i'm hot and sweaty let's jump in this sand that's a great idea great way to start yeah. 
Um, it was good to yeah. see Tori Musset. That was the the girlfriend who halfway through the events realizes, oh, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Like, yeah. how stupid? How stupid are you? Like, wh- this is the moment where you thought he's going too far. Anyway, yeah. uh, funny though that she she's the actress who just makes that face like. Like uh, she was in, <laughs> <laughs> she was in uh, that movie with uh, Denzel that I watched. Uh, right, no, man, out of time, man, out of time or man on fire, out of time, man on fire. He was, she man was the fire. mom in Man on Fire, and she that was her face the whole time. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then an, another character who gets typecast hard is Nathan Jones, the big boy, the gigantic version of Steve Austin. Oh yeah, yeah. Why is that dude in every movie for like he had a ten year span where he was in every movie and he was always the giant dude who got murked. You know what I mean? <laughs> every yeah. movie he was in Tro- uh, Troy. He was in like multiple kung fu movies, including Ang Bak. Like we just we need a oh no maybe it was Protector, but we just need a gigantic dude who doesn't have any lines. <laughs> And <laughs> make him scream a little bit, few times, and then he gets murked by something. Make him, yeah. a, tr- a truck hit him or whatever. Yeah. And always the really small guy that beats him up, too. Anyway, I thought it was really convenient that the ankle bracelets had little pole tags to blow. Like, yeah, yeah. Really poor design there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought it was a great action movie. Way better than I thought it would be. I was expecting a red box surprise, like just terrible editing, terrible shots, but it was actually a pretty solid action movie. I give it a popcorn and one, maybe mm-hmm. a two. Now nah, let's go one. I got to stop flip flopping popcorn and one. I didn't give my review um, two. I give it a two on it's a nostalgia factor for me. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see anything really wrong with it. So maybe it is a popcorn and two because it doesn't have a lot of flaws. And <laughs> just a little bit of the, you know, the the, the corniness of it. A little it's bit. Got corn. Like, it's a There's little corn. cheesy, you know? Some cheesy There's action corn. stuff in there. Yeah. Some tropes, you know? But There's some tropes. Oh, oh, oh. There's some lines that I I had to write down. <laughs> the 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 fellow who got massaged and then she pulled his ankle bracelet. I just yeah, will have yeah. to probably edit this. But he's like, ah, bitch, got me again. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, he's like, I want 100% awareness across this internet. (laughs) (laughs) And the same thing, same guy, the bad guy. He says, uh, oh, trust me, Goldie, internet, it's wildfire. (laughs) 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 And I especially like just um, the Stone Cold, the best Stone Cold moment was when he's fighting the Japanese guy. And he's like, let's go, sweetheart. And that's, that was that was perfect, just so good. Yeah. You're like waiting for someone to throw him a, a six pack, and he just smashes it and ah, yeah. does the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, let's just go ahead and go popcorn and two. I don't, I didn't. It had corn, but it wasn't like bad. Those fight scenes were good. Not a lot of depth to it, but that's okay. That's the type of movie it is. Speaking of movies like this, have you seen um, Battle Royale, Japanese movie? I don't know. I don't know. Well. Battle Royale, I'm sure you'd know, because it's the same style movie, except it's mm. ninth graders. Oh. Yeah, it's like a class gets – is over, it's a overpopulation, I think, is the excuse. I believe that's what it is. But they, it's like a regular high school class, and the teacher comes in, and he says, you guys all suck. Get on the helicopter. Uh, the last one alive gets to leave the island. So that's what this movie was probably based off of. I did a little bit of research, and I know that there's been survival and the greatest game or all, all these things like Last Man Standing has always been around. Stephen King had yeah. the long walk. But on the island, last one to survive wins. I think Battle Royale is the original, and it was really, really dark because it's kids, and like one kid's a psychopath like like the English mm. guy in this movie. And it, yeah. The, the manga is really, really dark, and I, I honestly wouldn't suggest it to anyone because it deals with, like, extreme psychological horror. But the, mm. the movie was based off of this. They actually were making a, a remake of that movie, but because of Hunger Games, they thought it would be a copy, even though Hunger Games copied it. You know what I mean? Weird. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's a little tangent there. Let's talk about uh, the big boy and girl of the uh, week, Barbenheimer. 
Tell us nice. about it, bud. Which order did she get? Right. Uh, so I saw Barbie on Thursday night premiere, and then Friday night I went and saw Oppenheimer. So nice. I'll start in that order, kind of. Yeah. So Barbie, really cool, packed theater, super packed. Mm. Uh, got got all the Barbie swag. Got the cup. I should have I should have drank my water out of the Barbie cup to show off a little bit. I got the Barbie popcorn tin. You know. Yeah. Gonna rinse it out. Give it to the niece. She's gonna love it. Um, oh, you're gonna say needy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, here you go, buddy. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so this, you know, this movie is what I expected with a little bit more bizarre mm. also than I expected. It gets a little wacky, a little out there, uh, very unexpectedly so in certain aspects. You know, you're expecting it to be over the top, girly, whimsical, you know, but sometimes you're like, "What? Well, OK, like it, it makes sense in itself, but sometimes it's a bit much to take in. Uh, gotcha. I'm not, yeah, I'm not all hip to, I'm not hip to all the Barbie history and the Easter eggs and all of that, but this movie sure. was crammed with it. And I'm sure to those who are, it's really, you know, it's funny. It's, it's, they do a really good job with it. Did their homework. Yeah. There's a, there's a funny scene with all the Kens basically have a big showdown bro down mm. on the beach. And there's just this big fight scene but uh, in the style of the movie it's very light and it's very funny kind of mm. like ryan gosling is just walking around and he just does like a flex and the one of the kens goes flying oh that's away. great yeah yeah he's like he's like he's like neo ken okay and uh there's another good one where the kens are kind of rolling around and through one way or another they develop a fascination with horses <laughs> and so they're all, but they don't actually have them. So they do a Monty Python where they're all just kind of rolling around going like this, <laughs> <laughs> like an invisible horse posse. That's awesome. Uh, that was pretty, yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, it's got, you know, some re really heartwarming elements to it. Everyone played their roles really well. Uh, this movie, you can tell it's going to give Republicans ulcers. Fox <laughs> News is, uh, it's, <laughs> it's already started. Uh, I was at the gym and literally they were on like a 15 minute segment where they were just is Barbie woke. Yeah, exactly. Just, just going on and on about it. And you know, it is uh, in quotes woke very much so. And that's, that's okay. You know, it's got, there are things that need to be addressed in society and this seems like a good vehicle. It seems like an appropriate vehicle for them to do so this movie, mm -hmm. uh, but Sometimes it is a little too, uh, it kind of kinks up, like jams up the, the story, mm -hmm. the, the, the narrative, the pushing of the story. It gets a little too like, okay, pause for long, you know, feminist tangent, yeah. you know, it kind of gets a little preachy at times, but it, it's so creative and it, it wasn't a great movie, but it's what you expect. Okay. Really and uh, yeah, so off off creativity alone, I give it a popcorn and, and a beer. Nice, yeah, that's cool. It's watchable. It's an experience. When you mentioned the fight scene, I thought they were gonna do like one of these, like you do when you're actually uh, <laughs> fighting with <those> kids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. Pass the action figures together. <laughs> anyway, yeah, and so the second butter on top was Oppenheimer also a very packed theater, not nearly as packed as Barbie, but it was definitely an event as well. And as we all can, you can, if you track any of this uh, entertainment media stuff, uh, Bar uh, Barbie is blowing Oppenheimer out of the water, expectedly. Oh, so right now. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to say, I'm going to come out here and say Oppenheimer was one of the best movies I've ever seen. Whoa. It was incredible. And maybe and it's the history buff in me. Sure. Is was just feasting, was just nerding out on this the whole time. Uh it's a long movie. It's three hours long. Woo. Uh and it's it's you know, it's the bomb and everything, and that's exciting. But you know, an actual bomb, not like the bomb. Like it's not the bomb, even though <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. joke. Bombs pretending to be compliments pretending to be bombs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very dialogue heavy. Uh, very, you know, big actor heavy as Christopher Nolan films are. It's funny, you know, like, so Robert Downey Jr., Cillian Murphy, mm-hmm. Florence Pugh. There's just, it's just actor after actor after actor. Like, it's funny because Rami Malek, um, yep. Freddie Mercury is in it. And I'm like, this guy won best actor, like what, a, two years ago. And he doesn't have, like, he has shown a lot. And I'm like, he hasn't said a word until like the very, very end of the movie. I mean, he has a big role, a pivotal role at the end of the movie. But you're like, is he just in this? Like, it's just, just to, yeah, yeah, you know, Nolan, that, that's, yeah. Nolan has that pull, like um, a Scorsese or a Tarantino. Like, I just heard this morning, Matt Damon was talking about it. And he said he actually had to talk to his wife in counseling about backing up and relaxing from the theater for a little while. And he said, he said this in marriage counseling, the only caveat is if Christopher Nolan calls him. And that's what happened. <laughs> Yeah. So it caused a big fight with his wife. <laughs> that's what people like. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll I'll sweep the floor in your movie if you let me in your movie, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. It, like you know, Josh Peck from Nickelodeon fame, yep. all that. Yep. Drake and Josh. He he's in the movie as well, and he's just kind of a guy who just every so often he's there to just kind of make a dramatic face, and he's got like a. <laughs> He's got like a, a a known kind of funny like that's the the face he does, you know. Mm-hmm. If you've seen anything he's in, it's like, oh yeah, that's his face that he's yeah. known for. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, so dialogue heavy, uh, some awkward, random kind of sex scenes in it that you're like, whoa, okay, uh, this is happening right now. It's very graphic and weird. Like it's kind of um. Uh, I guess I can spoil it. It's a three hour movie. I can spoil one thing. So it's been in the news a little bit that there is a prolonged nude scene between Cillian Murphy and Florence Pugh, where it's just um, casual nakedness. I would say Um, they're having, he's married to Emily Blunt, Cillian Murphy. And he, but he has an affair with Florence Pugh's character Oh. And they're inter yeah they're interrogating interrogating Oppenheimer about his relationships and whatnot. It's during the kind of McCarthy era, so they're thinking he's a communist. It's kind of the mm-hmm. it's the the plot like the the problem in the movie. I can't think for you know lack of a better oh, word. It's the problem it's the, of the, the movie big thing. Yeah, yeah, is that he's being interviewed during the McCarthy era about his connections to communists and if he's selling secrets to the Russians and whatnot. So yeah. they're interrogating him and they basically blow up his spot. And say like, oh, what are you doing meeting this girl? She's a known communist. You spent the night with her in a hotel room. And it's the wife sitting behind him watching this interrogation. And then kind of out of nowhere, they're they're kind of just doing it. Like she's imagining it, but they're going to town on each other. Florence Pugh and Cillian Murphy in the middle of this interrogation, just like sitting at the table with everyone watching. It's it's pretty pretty awkward. Uh, Like as a means of just showing... The shock what she's, of the wife. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Uh, the bomb scene where they're testing it and they're getting ready and they're counting it down and all that's going on. Super, super intense. You're like, you're like holding your chair. It's like, it's, it's good stuff. The way that they build up to it. I mean, mm. cause it's history. We all know what happens, you know? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so there's no real surprises, but it's just, it's super intense. Very good how he did that. A lot of science talk, a lot of, you know, gets into the jibber jabber of all the science and the jib uh, the jib jabber. Yeah. It's a lot to um, kind of process. And you, it kind of, at first you're like, Whoa, you know, I don't know really, I'm not following this. And you're kind of, it kind of makes you pause and worry a bit, but you get around to understanding the, the general idea of what's going on. Mm. I give it a popcorn and three popcorn and three. Well, that's what I'm yeah. going to see. Yeah. I was really hoping to see some Barbie. Oh, she's <laughs> rhyming all day, baby. <laughs> That's cool. I'm glad to hear that. And uh, was is the whole thing black and white? No, no, just uh, just it, there's one kind of dynamic of uh, the dialogue and the relationships in the movie that stay black and white for some odd reason. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Just wondering. Yeah. 
I think cool. it's just a dirt. There's Good a lot of jumping around. Sorry, there's a lot of jumping around in Nolan fashion, you know, in, yeah. in terms of the timeline. So I, I think yeah. it's just to differentiate that, like, okay, this is this time with these people. Okay, yeah, like, um, yeah, uh, Memento. That's definitely on my drunk classic list for later. Also, I haven't seen Tenet. I feel like a failure. That one's but, uh, uh, yeah. Speaking of uh, classics, uh, we have a classic uh, freshly delivered off the press. And it's definitely going to give me a point this week because I have not seen it. Oh, a point again for Condemned. I haven't seen Condemned. Uh, so the it's going to be some. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be some Corel. It's going to be some uh, ma- 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 <laughs> Magic Mike guy. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, anyway, Tatum. yeah, Tatum. I, I now I just ruined the whole build up. It's going to be Foxcatcher. I think that's the one oh, we're talking about. Good movie. Yeah, yeah, really. Uh, good Fry movie. said he wanted us to watch it. It's one of his like tops of all time, so mm. I can't wait to see it. I've been waiting to wanting to see it because I heard Carell does what Carell does, and uh, you know, wrestling is not um, a sports movie you see too much, which is a shame because wrestling is like yeah, extreme dedication. Yeah, like Greco Roman stuff and all that. Yeah, real wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I like oh, it. Haunted Mansion. Checking it out. Yeah. It's gonna be good. All right. Well, I think that'll be all. Um, let's uh, get out of here. The welcome. We always got you back. Come check us out on Popcorn and Beers on Twitter and all yep. of the sad fan link trees and such. And uh, see it. See you at the movies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>